I'm about to answer every burning question you've ever had about creatine, backed by my own experience and science. Despite being one of the most researched and widely used supplements in the world, it is still surrounded by myths and confusion. But today, my goal is to explain everything in a simple and easy to understand way. Let's start with the first question, which is, what is creatine and how does it work? This naturally occurring compound is found in small amounts of foods like red meat and fish, and is also synthesized by the liver, kidneys, and pancreas in our bodies. However, the amount obtained through diet alone is relatively low. To reach the recommended daily intake, you would need to consume around 2.2 to 3.3 pounds of red meat or 2.2 to 3.7 pounds of fish per day. This is an impractical amount for most people, both in terms of diet and cost. That's why supplementation is widely used. It provides an easy, efficient, and cost-effective way to ensure your muscles have optimal creatine levels without the need for excessive food consumption. Its primary function is to help regenerate adenosine triphosphate, the energy currency of the cell, during short bursts of high-intensity exercise. When you perform activities like sprinting or heavy lifting, your muscles rely on ATP for power. Creatine phosphate donates a phosphate group to ATP to rapidly replenish ATP stores, allowing you to maintain performance and power output. I remember when I first started taking this supplement, my workouts felt a little bit more explosive and I was able to push through the final reps with greater energy. Research consistently shows that increasing the availability of this naturally occurring compound can improve performance in high-intensity, short-duration activities by speeding up ATP regeneration. Does creatine really help build muscle and enhance performance? The short answer is yes. Supplementation with it has been shown to improve muscle mass, strength, and performance in numerous studies. For example, research published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research indicates that creatine helps increase muscle fiber size and improves training capacity, meaning you can work out harder and more frequently. In my own training, I noticed that incorporating this supplement allowed me to lift heavier and recover faster between sets. The result? Consistent improvements in strength and noticeable gains over time. The enhanced energy availability means that even when fatigue sets in, your muscles can continue to perform at a high level. Is creatine safe for long-term use? The safety of this supplement has been extensively researched over the past few decades. The consensus among scientists is that creatine is safe for healthy individuals when taken at recommended doses. Don't worry, I will also talk about the dosage shortly. Studies have repeatedly shown no adverse effects on kidney or liver function in those who are healthy. I've been on creatine for years, monitored by regular checkups, and my health markers have remained solid. Of course, if you have pre-existing conditions, it's wise to consult with a healthcare professional before starting any new supplement regimen. What is the proper dosage and do I need a loading phase? The loading phase is a myth because your muscles will reach full saturation naturally with a consistent daily dosage of 3 to 5 grams. It just takes about 2 to 4 weeks instead of a few days. Research shows no long-term difference in performance or muscle gains between those who load and those who don't. Plus, loading can cause bloating stomach discomfort, and water retention, which are easily avoided by sticking to a steady daily intake. A slow and steady approach gives you the same benefits without the unnecessary side effects. Is creatine a steroid? No, it's not a steroid. This is a naturally occurring compound that works by enhancing your body's ability to produce energy during high-intensity exercise. Steroids, on the other hand, are synthetic substances that mimic the effects of testosterone and come with a range of significant side effects and legal restrictions. Creatine is legal, widely studied, and generally recognized as safe, making it a very different supplement from anabolic steroids. Does creatine <gasps> cause hair loss? There's been some concern that it might contribute to hair loss, but the evidence is far from conclusive. Some early studies hinted at a possible link between creatine supplementation and an increase in dihydrotestosterone levels, a hormone implicated in hair loss in those genetically predisposed. However, more recent research and anecdotal evidence suggests that it is unlikely to be a direct cause for most people. In my own experience and that of many athletes, no hair loss has been noticed. Many people take creatine for just a few days, then panic the moment they find a single hair on their pillow, immediately blaming it for the cause. And just like that, the myth was born. When is the best time to take creatine? Pre or post-workout or at another time? Timing can play a role in its effectiveness although the most critical factor is consistent daily intake. Many experts recommend taking creatine post-workout when muscles are primed for nutrient uptake. Consuming it with a source of carbohydrates or protein can enhance its absorption due to an insulin spike. Personally, 
I take creatine in the morning on its own, followed by a sip of water. No need to mix it with anything. Some people prefer adding it to their post-workout shake, which is fine, but what really matters is consistency. Instead of worrying about the perfect timing, just make it a regular part of your routine. What are the different forms of creatine available? And which one is the most effective? Monohydrate is the most widely studied and proven form of creatine, and it remains the gold standard for most athletes. It is effective, cost-efficient, and supported by a vast body of research. Other forms, such as ethyl ester, hydrochloride, and buffered, have been marketed with claims of improved absorption or reduced water retention, but the scientific consensus largely supports monohydrate as the best option for enhancing performance and muscle growth. In my experience, sticking with it has consistently delivered the best results. Does creatine cause weight gain or water retention? It can cause a modest increase in body weight, primarily due to water retention within muscle cells. This phenomenon is often a positive sign that your muscles are being hydrated and are primed for growth. While you might see a slight bump on the scale, it's important to understand that this is not fat gain. It's an indicator that the creatine is working. Personally, I noticed an initial increase in weight, but it coincided with enhanced strength and a fuller, more muscular appearance. In most cases, you will barely notice a difference in your weight. Do you need to cycle creatine, or can you take it continuously? Current research suggests that creatine can be taken continuously without the need for cycling. Unlike some other supplements, it doesn't build up toxic levels in the body when consumed at the recommended doses. I've personally been on creatine for extended periods without any interruptions and have not experienced any negative side effects that would warrant a break. How long does it typically take to see results from creatine supplementation? Most people begin to see noticeable improvements in strength and muscle size within two to four weeks of consistent supplementation. For me, it took about three weeks before I observed that I was able to push slightly heavier weights and recover faster between sets. The exact timeline can vary based on factors like diet, training intensity, and individual metabolism, but consistency is key. How should creatine be consumed? Should it be mixed with water or a meal? And does timing matter? The most common method of creatine consumption is to mix it with water, a post-workout shake, or even a carbohydrate-rich beverage to enhance absorption. Many studies suggest that pairing creatine with a source of insulin-boosting carbs or protein can increase its uptake by muscle cells. As I mentioned previously, I like to keep things simple and just take it in the morning with a sip of water. Timing isn't as critical as consistent daily intake. Can women take creatine? Yes, it's beneficial for women just as it is for men. Although much of the early research focused on male athletes, more recent studies have shown that creatine supplementation improves strength, endurance, and overall performance in women as well. Female athletes and fitness enthusiasts have reported similar benefits, including enhanced recovery and muscle tone. Can teenagers take it? The research on adolescent supplementation is more limited compared to studies on adults. But overall, the consensus is that when used responsibly and under proper guidance, it appears to be safe. Many experts advise that teenage athletes should focus on proper nutrition, training, and recovery first, and consider supplementation only when their diet and workload demands an extra boost. It's essential for teens and their parents or coaches to consult with a healthcare professional before starting any supplementation. In my experience, I saw older teen athletes who benefited from its performance-enhancing effects, but the key was careful dosing, adequate hydration, and a well-balanced diet. Should you stop taking creatine while on a break from training? Many athletes worry that if they're not hitting the gym as hard, the supplement might become redundant. However, evidence suggests that continuing to take it, even at a slightly reduced maintenance dose, helps keep your muscle stores at optimal levels. The idea is that by maintaining saturation, you can ease back into training more quickly once your break ends. Personally, during periods when I had to step back from intense workouts, I found that sticking with a consistent, lower dose helped me prevent a significant drop in performance. What happens when you stop taking it? Over time, your muscle stores will gradually return to their baseline levels, a process that typically takes a few weeks. The immediate effect you might notice is a slight drop in body weight, primarily due to reduced water retention within your muscles. However, this isn't a loss of muscle tissue, rather, it's simply a change in how your muscles are hydrated. Importantly, discontinuing supplementation doesn't mean you lose all your hard-earned gains. The concept of muscle memory plays a significant role here. Even if the supplement is stopped, your muscles retain adaptations that allow you to regain strength and size more rapidly when you resume training. What is the best period to take creatine when you're cutting, bulking, or maintaining? 
Short answer, it doesn't matter as long as you apply the previous things I mentioned. Is it worth taking creatine? Several studies have shown that those who consistently supplement with it experience enhanced training capacity, leading to higher quality workouts and greater long-term gains. I've personally noticed these benefits, improved performance, faster recovery, the ability to progressively increase my training loads over time without hitting a plateau, and of course, last but not least, better defined muscles. Another important consideration is the way creatine interacts with other aspects of your nutrition and training. For instance, proper hydration, a balanced diet, and an effective training program all work together to maximize creatine's benefits. Emerging research continues to reveal that it may even have neuroprotective and cognitive benefits, suggesting that its role extends far beyond just muscle energy. There are even some interesting studies that prove that it helps with depression. This makes it one of the most versatile and well-supported supplements available. I've been taking it for years and have never experienced a single negative side effect. The same goes for the people around me who use it regularly. Nothing but benefits. If you want to achieve a Greek god physique naturally, make sure you watch my full video series where I rank the best and worst exercises for muscle building.